This is day 31 of my six mark challenge for AQA GCSE Science. In the run up to the exams from Monday to Saturday, I'm posting a new video each day with a six mark question so that you can practice these extended response answers and see how many marks you would get. You'll find a link in the description below to each week's questions and also a playlist where you can access all of the previous 30 videos. In today's question, we're looking at the structure and the function of different blood vessels. But before you dive in, a couple of quick reminders. Firstly, this is not an essay question. So while you do need to lay your ideas out in a logical order so that you can make strong links between different aspects of the question, you aren't going to receive any marks at all for your spelling or grammar or writing in full sentences. And so actually you can make your life and your examiner's life a lot easier by answering in the form of bullet points or a numbered list or even using a table. Also, it's really important that you make sure that you have answered the full question. So in this instance, that means you're going to need to talk about structure and function, and you're going to need to discuss as many different kinds of blood vessel as you know about. If you haven't done so already, pause the video and give yourself six minutes to answer this six mark question. Before I start writing my answer to this question, I'm going to take a little bit of time just to annotate it with the key information that I need to include. So although the question just says the structure of blood vessels, I know that in GCC biology that includes information about arteries and veins and capillaries. And then as well as including information about their structure, so what does each of those blood vessels look like, I also need information about their function. So how are their jobs different? Why do I have three kinds of blood vessel in the first place? Now this is a prime example of a question that I would lay out as a table. This is going to make it really easy for my examiner to see that I have hit each of these criteria and also it's going to make sure that I actually do talk about the structure and the function of all three types of blood vessel because if I don't I'll have an empty box staring back at me and I'll know that I've missed something out. So let's look at structure first. So these arteries have much thicker walls than the veins or the capillaries and specifically they have thicker layers of elastic tissue but also thicker layers of smooth muscle. The number one thing that we all know about veins is that veins with a V have valves in them. And then you might want to include the converse statements that you've already made about arteries, saying that, well, veins have thinner walls, at least compared to the um, arteries. Obviously, they're still a lot thicker than the capillaries and they have thinner layers of elastic tissue and thinner layers of muscular tissue. And because all of these layers are thinner, that means that the veins have a much larger lumen. They have a larger hole in the middle than the arteries and than the capillaries, because obviously the lumen of a capillary is absolutely tiny. And then speaking of those capillaries, they have walls that are only a single cell thick. So, so far, I've discussed my three types of blood vessel and I've talked about the structure for all of them. Now I need to talk about their function and ideally link these together. So I'm going to draw some arrows to kind of join up my table a little bit. Now, the key thing that we all know about arteries as just a general point is that they're carrying blood away from the heart. Well, how does that link with these things that I've already said about their structure? Well, blood that's moving away from the heart is going to be under high pressure. So we have this thicker wall in order to withstand that high pressure and we need lots of elastic tissue to allow the artery to be able to stretch out of shape and then reform. And that thicker layer of muscle is also going to allow the artery to maintain that pressure and maintain that force acting on the blood. Then if we think about the veins, the reason that we have valves is to prevent that backflow of blood. It's the same reason that you have valves in your heart. And then all of these other statements we've made are because the blood is returning to the heart under less high pressure than it would be leaving in the arteries. So therefore, we need less elasticity, we need less muscle. All of that links to the fact that the blood that is in the veins is under lower pressure. And then these capillaries. Well, we know that the point of capillaries, the function of the capillaries, I should say, is to supply blood and therefore oxygen and other nutrients to individual cells. And therefore, it's crucial that diffusion is able to happen out of those capillaries. So the reason that the walls are only one cell thick is to maintain this short diffusion pathway. Now, you'd probably be absolutely fine drawing arrows between these, as I've done here, to make it really clear that they're linked together. But you might also choose to lay out your answer as bullet points instead so that you can say arteries have thicker, more elastic walls in order to withstand high pressure and allow them to stretch and reform. And that would also just make it really, really clear to your examiner. But if you're going to do that, I would really strongly suggest that you use bullet points so that you're limiting yourself to a single concept per bullet point. 
rather than just writing prose that goes on for pages and pages and makes it really hard for your examiner to follow. Now, as I keep emphasising in these videos, the way that these extended response questions work, you're not going to get six marks just for saying six true things. Instead, they are level marked. And what that means is that you have to hit certain criteria in order to move up a level. So if you've only put six things that are all from the same part of the mark scheme, then you're not going to get more than two marks. You could have included everything on the left hand side of my table and you still wouldn't have a level three answer. So in order to hit level two and get three marks or four marks, you're going to need to have talked about all of these types of blood vessels and discussed structure and function. Then to get level three, we're going to need really strong links between them. So, for instance, that could be saying um, the artery has a thicker wall in order to withstand higher pressure. So you're actually having linked them together and specified how they affect one another, not just having made isolated statements. For tomorrow's question, we're back to the very first unit in GCSE Chemistry. Don't forget, there's a link in the description below to all of this week's questions and also the playlist containing all of the previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I hope we'll see you back tomorrow for day 32 of the Six Mark Challenge. If you have found this video useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE Science Revision videos coming soon.